All right, so welcome back to the Fab Forms. So a couple days ago, I did a full video on the English wheel. Kind of went over the basics of English wheel, English wheeling, how it works, why it does what it does, and what you get as a finished product after you do what it does. So this video is going to be all about planishing. So the planisher is very similar to the English wheel in, the, in that it can thin metal, but that's not like the primary, the primary use for it. At least not for me. This episode of the Fab Forms is brought to you by WD-40. To see their entire product line, visit WD-40.com. So, so really quick, this is most people call this a body hammer. Basically, this is a planishing hammer. And what you'd want to do is if you were planishing by hand, you would take something like this and a buck and you would kind of planish out any kind of panel that you have. Now, you could do it like that. It would take you forever. Or you can use a planisher and it gets the job done fast. And basically what it does is the same thing you're doing by hand. It just does it really, really fast. And you have the ability to change the dies on the bottom so you can use like a hard die or soft dies depending on what you're working with. I like to use these for aluminum. Um, these will be for your steels. And you can change the contours. Very similar to you, what you would do on the English wheel. Depending on what you're trying to planish, you kind of match the contour of that with the die. Uh, mainly because you kind of need that contour in order to fit a round panel over it. If you was doing something flat, you'd want more contact patch you get more done, more work done faster. So yeah, that's the basics. But let's jump into it and I'll kind of show you what, what the real purpose, what the real advantage to having something like this is. So if you watched the English wheel video I did a couple days ago, uh, this is basically a planished piece. You can kind of see all the hammer marks from this machine on the inside. And that's because that's I was being a little aggressive. You can actually lighten this thing up and it'll make it much smoother. Which brings me to what the primary purpose of this machine is. The primary purpose of this machine is to smooth metal. Now that could be for several different reasons. Uh, you know, if you bend something and then you, you make a mistake, you can actually flatten it back out, planish it smooth and it was like it never happened. Or if you take and beat some contour in a panel. So take a mallet like this and you kind of beat a rough shape into a panel. You can actually take a planisher and smooth that out. And that's that's actually what we're going to do in this video. We'll, uh, we'll beat a panel up and then we'll kind of smooth it out so you can see how it works. These things will also do other things. They'll do linear stretching. I've kind of showed that in some other videos where with a special die you can thin that metal out which causes it to stretch or grow and then you can actually make things curve. And I don't... I don't think I have an example but well I do have an example. So these pieces here of aluminum were actually just straight straight pieces run through the planisher and because it stretches the outside more than the inside it kind of makes it curve. I've kind of went over that in another video so I don't want to go too far into that. What I do want to show you is what the primary purpose of this machine is and that is to smooth out metal. So that's what we're going to do. Now let's get into how this thing works. So like I mentioned this planisher has an upper die or I guess they all have an upper die usually flat and then the bottom die like I said this is not the one I'm going to use bottom dies tend to have some contour to them so you know it kind of matches up with whatever it is you're trying to planish all right so the bottom stationary the upper die is part of a pneumatic hammer this hammer basically oscillates uh, extremely fast really faster than your eyes can see it just makes a lot of racket and then through that oscillation, as you move that metal through this thing, it smooths that panel out. It's 
simple enough. The only other thing is it's got an adjuster on the bottom. That adjuster works very similar to the English wheel as far as as you spin it, this piece goes up or down. You can kind of set the distance between the hammering die and the lower die to match whatever thickness of metal or tension that you're looking for within the piece. All right, so for this, this demonstration, we're gonna do some aluminum. So I'm gonna use one of my uh, plastic dies. It'll, it'll actually just be a little bit easier on the material. We're gonna kind of beat this thing into submission and then we're gonna show you how this thing will planish it or smooth it out. Like I said, we're gonna try to replicate this piece here. Uh, you can kind of fit this into any kind of project that you'd be making. It could be a fender, it could be a gas tank, it could be, um, yeah, anything, really. And we're gonna use a little bit of manual labor. Got this mallet. And I've got this piece of aluminum. Now I just kind of contoured this thing in the video I did the other day with the English wheel, but it doesn't have any doesn't have any kind of shape to it yet. So the idea, and I have a bead bag, you've probably seen these used before. Basically it's just a leather bag with some lead shot in it. We're gonna take it, we're gonna kind of try to put some shape in it with a mallet. exercise in the process and then we'll go smooth it out on the planisher. Looks beautiful. Hey, what is roll like that? Could be a gas tank. Now I'm making this a little bit extreme just to kind of show you, I mean obviously I'm not being very careful about how I'm beating this thing. Kind of trying really to make a mess out of it just so I can show you how that planisher works. Nothing else allows you to take out some aggression. All right, now let's go see if we can fix it. All right, so the planish is ready. And there's two, there's kind of two ways that you can adjust how fast you work a piece um, and how hard it works that piece. One is with the tension. So this thing moving up and down, kind of the tension you're gonna put or the gap that you're gonna put in here, it's gonna kind of fit around this panel. Now I'm gonna have it kind of loose at first just to try to get all these wrinkles through there. You know, I wanna try to be able to feed those through there. The second thing is air pressure. So the more air pressure you put on this particular unit, the harder this thing is gonna hit, uh, moving more, flattening more metal, moving more metal. Now there's a disadvantage because, like on this piece, you can actually see all the hammer marks. Really, it was just too much air pressure. If I had turned it down, 
I probably could have made this thing ultra smooth, which is what I'm gonna try to do with this one. The other thing is I failed to mention that you could do this with the English wheel as well. So I could take this, put it in the English wheel, and roll all these bumps out basically and smooth this thing up and you would never know that I just beat the crap out of it. But we're not doing the English wheel today, we're doing the planching hammer. So that's what I'm gonna use. And really this is the tool that I like. I mean you might, with that particular unit, you might kind of knock out some of the big stuff but you always kind of fine tune it with the planisher. So let's get started. One other thing, just like with the English wheel, you kind of want to lube your parts up. It's going to help them slide through everything. Very nice. It's going to let the tool do its work better and WD-40 makes this big blast, which works well for that. So there you go. That's real time. So I didn't like work on it for 20 minutes and then cut a bunch of it out. That is actual time that it takes to make a panel like that. I mean, I might, when I go in and edit this, I might edit, I might like do a cut clip, but I'm gonna cut off maybe a second. Like what you saw is what it takes to make that panel. You can kind of see that it's got the arc this way. It's got some arc this way. I mean, what did that take? I mean, beating the panel and planishing it maybe four minutes, three, four minutes. I mean, it's not perfect, but it's close. 
Wouldn't take much more. A little scuff and you wouldn't even know. Let's see. quick scuff. You can't even really tell that I just beat the crap out of that panel with a mallet. I mean it just cleans it all up. Now this is the other thing that you can use it for that. Like you can really pound out some stuff and you can use it to smooth it. But you can also use this thing to smooth welds. Like if you welded two pieces of aluminum together you could actually kind of clean up that weld a little bit and then take the planisher smooth that thing out and you would never even know that it was welded it'd be, it'd be that good uh, if you have some tool marks in these things with a shrinker stretcher or you know you caught it with a file or a hammer you can for the most part you can get that stuff out with a planisher so you know working with sheet metal if working with sheet metal something that maybe interests you i don't necessarily suggest that you go out and buy all kinds of fancy equipment but i do want you to be educated on what equipment does what how it does it, how fast it does it. You know, if you know those things, then you'll, you can kind of figure out what it is you need to accomplish the project that you're trying to create. These are a great tool for that exact thing. If you want to do some panels, really you could just have a mallet um, and a planisher and you wouldn't even need like an English wheel. You could just kind of beat those panels into submission, run it through your planisher, smooth it up, and you're ready to go. The only downfall I think to doing that is that when you kind of, you know, you're beating this panel, it's hard to get an idea of how much, how much shape that you're creating because it's all kind of wonky, right? You're not going to really know what it's going to look like until you flatten it out. First is the English wheel. You know, you can kind of see what you're doing as you do it. So you can kind of see that crown of form right there in front of you. You can take it over to your workpiece kind of fit it, see what it looks like. If it needs more, you take it back to the English wheel. You know what I'm saying? It's kind of easy to, to creep up on it versus uh, using a mallet in a, in a you know a bead bag or a lead bag. It's hard to kind of judge how far along you've gone, but it's always an option. The other thing that's cool is the planisher. Like I said, you can do linear stretching. Um, got a couple of those dies you can do Depending on, depending on what planisher you have, some of the planishers, some of the really good ones, you can actually do shrinking. I think they make like um, thumbnail shrinking dies and you can actually do some shrinking on a planisher. Uh, I don't think you could do it with this one. This one will just barely do a linear stretching, uh, really just an aluminum. And technically, I could probably stretch a panel through the center of it, very similar to like what you would do with an English wheel if I wanted to. I just don't see much need in, in using this particular piece of equipment for that. I like to use it for what I just showed you. So anyway, if you have any questions, be sure to drop them in the comments. I'll be happy to answer them. As always, thank you for joining me. There's another one. Another one of detailed, in-depth, well, not really in-depth. The Kyle Voss 101 version of the Planisher, right? The simple basics of what it does, how it does it. Now you can wrap your head around it and judge for yourself whether this is something you need in your shop or not. As always, thank you for joining me. I'll see you guys some more this week. Bibster work. This week, I promise. See you guys then.